Good afternoon and salutations! My name is Calypso, aka Mint Carousel, and welcome back to the stream! Uh, Yeah, so, anyway, um... I can't believe I was able... Uh, okay, now my headphones are not feeling right. Uh, can't believe I am... Um, I was able to reference a television show that I was utterly obsessed with when I was- hold on, when the fuck did Monsters Inside Me release? Fucking... Original release from 2009 to 2017. Okay, yeah, I was a kid. <laughs> I watched this as a kid. Uh, well, kid, teenager, but um... My god. 2009 to 2017, so all of my high school and all of my community college. Interesting. Yeah, uh, basically I was obsessed with this show. It's like one, one, well, it was one of my favorites from Animal Planet, which I was obsessed with as a kid. <laughs> um, uh, anyway. <laughs> Can't believe I got to reference it in the joke title of the stream. But anyway, let's get into whatever this is going to be. Okay. It's a scene from my childhood. Oh, that's what it's gonna be. At the time I was playing at a nearby park. Hmm. I say park, but it was a rather famous hmm, tourist spot. I was there often as a kid due to my grand being too busy with the story to entertain me. This had to have been before I started elementary school. It was there I met a girl around the same age as me. <gasps> oh my goodness! Oh, what? But it's, it's short. Oh my goodness. <gasps> she didn't answer my question. Oh. Unbelievable that she managed to keep her clothing colors consistent since then. <laughs> uh, wait, who are you talking about? <laughs> Wink out the red and yellow. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. It was rare to f It was rare to find other kids there my age, so I probably wanted to play with her. So I kept talking to her, and she kept ignoring me. <laughs> I eventually gave up and just sat down next to her. She was staring into the distance, seemingly at nothing. When I noticed that, I decided to follow her gaze without another word. Mm. Mihara is deniable since the blue ribbons could just be a coincidence. I, yeah, she just likes blue ribbons. I mean, mm. Marika's color coordination is too strong throughout all her outfits. Yeah. <laughs> Once it was time for the park to close, we both left. I told her I'd see her next time before we parted ways, but she remained silent. The day after that, she was there again, in the same spot, staring off into the distance. I sat beside her without a word. Thinking back, I'm amazed I was able to do that. 
It must have been that I wanted to mimic her or something. I spent the day sitting with her until the park closed. I told her I'd see her next time before we parted. She spent the day after doing the exact same thing. As did I. As usual, I told her I'd see her next time before we parted. But things changed the day after that. I remember thinking it was weird that she sounded so boyish despite being a girl. I probably should have had a strong reaction when the girl who had been silent for three days finally talked to me, but I guess that's just how kids were. Wait, hold on. Okay, she says book. Okay. Okay. So, so. <laughs> also hard to believe that Miharu used lesbian Boku back in elementary already. <laughs> hey, some people know that early. I didn't a lot of things, but some people know that early. Well. <laughs> Hmm. I didn't really understand what she meant at the time. That's why I was able to answer her right away. Hmm. I didn't care about her family name. Not like I was old enough to understand the nuance between given and family names. I just made sure to answer people when they asked by reciting what my grand told me to say. <laughs> we talked and played a lot on that day. She sounded worried when she asked. As usual for the young me, I didn't think about it for very long. So my answer was simple. <laughs> <coughs> After that day, I never met her there again. At that park, where the ever so familiar clock tower had just been built. I guess that... Much like how the park has now become our final destination, it also served as our beginning. Bruh. <sighs> Yo, y'all. Hmm. It doesn't feel like I've had a nightmare when I jolt awake. I normally wake up in a cold sweat whenever that man appears in my dreams. Hi, Lette. I mean, you usually come over to greet us when she wakes up, but, 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 suspicious. I love you. <coughs> Looks like Lette pawed the covers off of me at some point. That explains why I feel so cold. Actually, it's got nothing to do with the temperature. It's got more to do with the fact that I remember the man appearing in my dreams. Oh, yes, right! Hold on. Hold on. I was going to say something about that. I isn't she not supposed to remember him at what term she wakes up? What's going on there? I'm not sure why, but I'd completely forgotten about him until now. That's right. He's appeared a number of times before. <coughs> Some theories claim that the brain organizes one's memories while they sleep, which results in our dreams. It may be possible to dream about past events that you've forgotten based on that theory, but the dreams that I have feel more like I'm literally reliving those events. Dreams. Perkins said that the dream world represents a wealth of possibilities. In that case, they might not be mere memories, but the representation of a world that could be. <laughs> it's, um, entirely possible because the dream world is so tied with personal perception of reality 
that the reason why Miharu use uses <laughs> lesbian Boku and Rinka's color coordination is so on point um, is that because that's how Rinka's interpretation of them still filters in. So maybe she didn't use Boku back then. Maybe she didn't color coordinate her outfits so consistently back then. But because they do now, it, that perception is filtered into the memory. What y'all think? <laughs> okay. Who in the world is that man? Farfetched? Hmm. I don't know if I would say farfetched actually. Uh, pro I don't think so. Um, I think the only jump is that the memories have. Well, no, it's not. Oh, there, there is like a, you know, mystical element here that throws a wrench into all of this, <laughs> but um. With how actual real life memories work, you're not, you're, I think, like, unless this is just wrong and I have in incorrect information, but, um, that you remember, your memories are you remembering the last time you remembered it, and your, and even if that's not true, the, like, your personal perception does in fact color your memories and influence them. Um, there's like no such thing as like a perfect memory but again the whole thing with um the uh eldritch beings being involved means it's kind of muddy specifically I remember being confused at Miharu's Boku that's true okay um let they answered. <laughs> yeah, probably pointless to rely on the different answer. <clears throat> or is it? Dun dun dun. Who knows, maybe that world has dreams of the past as well. And again, I can't say whether or not cats even dream in the first place. Oh, they definitely do. I am pretty sure they do. <clears throat> um, it's really adorable to see them dreaming, actually. Um, they'll do like um the hunting call in their dreams and uh or when they're asleep when they're sleeping and yeah yeah it's cats definitely dream oh my god what if lente is has his own like divine selection going on oh shit okay anyway <laughs> or he he has like a cat parka in his mind oh my god <laughs> lol i wonder if mihara remembers those days then again it's mihara we're talking about she definitely does <laughs> she probably noticed that i'd forgotten and decided not to bring it up those events feel heavier than her confession somehow in fact it might be even possible that she's liked me ever since those days. Maybe I'm thinking too highly of myself. <laughs> Maybe. But it would explain why she hates saying goodbye. Oh. Henji. Oh, look, look at her. Look at her. Look. Look at her. <laughs> okay. I feel my cheeks heat up as I recall her confession. It's almost been a week. I wonder if there's a time limit or something for people on the receiving end of a confession. It'd help if someone told me. Well, I think the time limit is three weeks. Or four, because it's been a week already. But, uh, because, uh, the whole thing. I'll put it off for just a bit longer. If she asks about it, I'll apologize and explain. Alan and Federico are still at large, so I don't want to answer her until I settle things with them. Hmm, yeah, hmm, yeah, hmm. Ah, Bitan, Ohayo! 
I wonder if Mao's gonna ask. Coming to school every Monday has been something of a cathartic experience for me lately. It's proof that I'm able to live and see another week. Miharu is already there by the time I arrive, so we spend some time chatting until class starts. Once lunch rolls around, I make my way to the rooftop as usual. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mao stays in class so she can finish up the homework that needs to be handed in during fifth period. Homework given to us last Tuesday, might I add. Ah, uh, same. I finished it the day we got it, so I get to, to chill and enjoy lunch. After some small talk, I decided to bring up an important topic. Give me one second. Okay, one downside to these headphones is that I cannot put my glasses back on without removing them entirely or the, the headphones entirely so you know took a little bit of time to do that honestly i don't know how long these the, 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 those pauses and like pauses of silence feels but it always feels long to me um okay i'm referring to the discussion between federico and perka about whether or not her vessel has access to her powers <clears throat> While it turns out that isn't the case, Perga did say that she retains the ability to alter her fate, even from within her vessel. That statement seemed to take Mihara by surprise. Kimiはすでに僕の未練を知っている。だからこそ話そう。女神パルカもおそらく僕が君を思っていることを知っていた。僕が君とこの学校で再会できたのは女神が運命を変えたからかもしれないと思ったからさ。おお、really。Oh, that one snuck up on me. My goodness. Apparently, Mihara want had wanted to see me again ever since that day. <laughs> that never came about due to her family circumstances, though. They moved to the countryside not long after our la last meeting. And they did it because her dad caused an accident in which a child lost their life. Not only did the family get ostracized by the locals, but they faced harassment as well. They refused to let Mihara attend a nearby elementary school with things like that. Once they moved to the countryside, they started using her mother's maiden name instead of her father's. The accident left her father mentally impaired and unable to hold a standard job. It eventually led him to committing suicide when she was in 6th grade. Suicide was Mihara's cause of death as well. I know this, but I've never asked why. It might be best that I never know in truth. Mihara continues her story. 
Her father's suicide incited rumors of the accident he caused to spread. The results were even more fierce in such a small rural area. It led to her entire family having to move once again. Having returned to Tokyo, Miharu chose to enter Am Amecha because it offered scholarships to middle school students and it carried appeal to those wishing to attend college. She only knew my name at the time. So, the chances of our meeting again were slim. Especially when you consider that I wasn't part of any clubs or particularly well known. Even so, Miharu's wish to find me again never faltered. She figured she would have the best chance by going to a school in Tokyo. I Mm. Oh my god. Kuzen,もしくは奇跡と思っていたけれど、僕の思いを知っている女神が君と出会うように運命を変えたとしたら。Damn, you get to talk to Parka all like every night, and she's just gonna be her interesting self and. And you get to be entertainment for her too. And she does you a solid every now and then. I don't see a downside to this. Hmm, <laughs> okay, but why? Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Oh my god, she's talking to the Yeah, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Amecha Joshi was in the高校から入学するには偏差値がかなり高い。君の中間テストの順位は一般的な内部進学組以下だった。運命が改変されてもしなければ君が受かるとも思えない。あの、真顔で失礼なこと言わないでくれ。I <笑> figured she was joking at first as a way to lighten the mood. But judging by her reaction to my comment, she's serious. Ouch, my pride! Guess I can't blame her. She's been aware of my middling grades since my acceptance, but still. Being told I'm an idiot to my face sucks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm confident in that claim. There's no denying that fate can be and has been altered through divine selection. The results may not be perfect, but it's clear that there's a power we can't begin to comprehend at play. Still, that doesn't make the time we've spent together meaningless. Hmm. Okay. After saying that, she offers a pleasant smile. Her hair dances with the gentle breeze. <sighs>僕に疑われないように期末テストはちゃんと勉強するんだよ。こんな状況だけれど、君にはこれからも学校生活があるんだから。ミハルもでしょ。私の意見は変わらないよ。The <laughs> bell rings soon after. It goes to show how long we've been talking. We clean up in a hurry and make our way to class. She never asked about my answer to her confession, despite her being alone. A uh, balone. Being alone. I feel bad about that. Balone. <laughs> Nishima Miharu watches Rinka from behind as they make their way back to their classroom. She is under the impression that Rinka has forgotten about their meeting and when they were children. Her attitude makes it apparent that she remembers those events, but... 
me hurt in the sense that either her confession or regret card triggered Rinka's memory. She doesn't mind if Rinka forgot, considering how long ago it was. In fact, it would be a bigger issue if she does remember based on her attitude toward, toward Miharu. Miharu is willing to forgive Rinka no matter what she does, though. More importantly, Miharu didn't rec actually recognize Rinka at first. Hmm. Ooh. It was Miharu's first year at Amecha. She often found herself alone due to her lack of friends besides Mao, whose supu superb grades and looks caused others to avoid her for reasons only they understood. One day, soon after starting high school, <coughs> she was on the rooftop by herself as Mao had business el elsewhere. The scars on her wrists were already present. However, due to being alone, she had forgotten to keep them out of sight. Oh my god. Oh my god. The school year had just begun, so she didn't know the name of that girl. At first she thought they might be from the middle school due to their height, but the uniform ran counter to her assumption. Mihara made no attempt to answer th their thoughtless question. <clears throat> she was panicking over the possibility of her wrists being seen. Doubly so due to, due to rumors that had begun to spread. I wanted to say that they sit down right next to Miharu. <laughs> Miharu swears to herself that she won't speak to them. She gazes toward the horizon instead. Wait, what? Okay, comment. Actually, now that I think about it, Miharu might have dug up her blue ribbon from back when she was a kid, specifically because she wanted to have a chance for Anka to remember it. She's also the only one of them who uses a different ribbon after all. Huh. I... Uh... Maybe... <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. They never did try to say anything else to her, though. Mihara eventually <laughs> caved and braved a glance at the girl. They were gazing at the distance as well. Something sparked within Mihara the moment she looked over. She knew she was right, and yet she couldn't bring herself to speak. <laughs> Saying that, the girl stood up to leave. Much to Mihara's surprise, she found herself far too nervous to give any kind of response. Oh, that innocuous event was all it took to set Miharu free. It only took her till that afternoon to learn that the girl's name was Shishimai Rinka, and by the end of the next day, they and Mao had become close enough to have lunch and go home together. Oh. Rinka has yet to give her an answer. Miharu is still able to smile whenever she looks at her despite that, however. I head back home as soon as class is over. Miharu left in a hurry to go work, while Naomi has other things to do. Mao is normally the one to ask if she wants to head home together, so I left without her. I hear the sound of someone racing up behind me on my way, though. Ethan. Hey, Mo. I guess Mo has decided to chase, to chase after me. What happened? Ethan, you still not Ah, so Mo did ask. I, 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 I mean, I didn't know if it was going to be then, but I, I sort of figured that Mao would, would bring it up before me her ever did. ま、ビータンらしいですな。ちゃんと考えてるってことだもんね。ロー。きっといろんなこと考えてるでしょう。ミハルの告白のことだけじゃなくて、いろんなこと。<笑> 
unrelated stuff. Peter no ima ichiban kangai nai to ike nai koto. Yarana kucha ike nai koto. What are they? Kore ga owari made. Kotae wa dase nai itte koto da mon ne. What are these things? Okay. だから返事はもうしばらく時間かかりますって、ミハルにそれとなく伝えておくね。はあ。タイムスライクです。めきみわんでるし、really isn't involved, isn't involved in divine selection at all. Oh, my goodness. I know deep down that she isn't, though. Well, she can seem dense at first blush, Mao can pick up on the most subtle clues, or cues. I think either one could work there. In fact, she might know more about us and the change in our behavior than we do ourselves. Sounds like she would be an excellent. That she'd do very well in, 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 in Divine Selection, actually. Oh, maybe. No, no, actually, maybe that's not true. Maybe that just, that's just. That's just for her friends, because she knows them so well. Okay, anyway. だから時間がかかっても答えはちゃんと決めること。どっちに転んでもうちらは変わんないからさ。いや付き合った場合はってあれこれ二回目だね。That's funny。あついでに言っておくと、ナオリンも感づいてるっぽいよ。うん。マジ
she had planned on coming home this week for a bit, but that got cancelled thanks to scale. When she'd get another chance was anyone's guest, so she asked me to clean her room for her. I actually got scolded for not having cleaned it already, but that's only because I thought it would be better not to mess with her stuff. I'll start cleaning it regularly after today. There's something else I need to do in here, though. Oh, well. What would, what would that be? Oh. I need to hear that again. <laughs> Mihara attempts to greet her customer as per usual, but she switches gears the moment she sees their face. It's not other than Federico. Oh, not this bullshit again. The fact that he's here means he has business with her. She shows him to a seat and then brings him some water. Leaving him to another staff member is too risky, so she decides to wait on him herself. あいからずあんたは美人だ。今日の仕事は何時までだ。店長に行って出入り禁止にしてもらおうか。いや、そいつは困る。事情があってな。あの店はもう出入り禁止になっちまったんだ。Then <laughs> Stop having long pauses. <laughs> then talk. It isn't hard for her to figure that he's referring to Milk Crown. She isn't aware of the specifics, but chances are it involved him getting blackout drunk. More importantly, something seems off about him to her. He seems far more composed than usual. Almost like he has completely changed since she last saw him. なんでもないよ。そうだな。あと1時間ほど待っていてくれないかい。そうすれば休憩に入るから。僕がここに来よう。ああ、そうだな。とりあえずワインリストをもらえるか。残念ながらそんなものはこの店にはないよ。あるの
While a common sight for the store's regulars, it is a spot of bad luck for Alan. He wants to discuss things properly with Rinka. He could do it over the phone, seeing as he has her number, but he wants to, to see the look in her eyes as he does it. Alan abandons his plan and sets off to find somewhere else to satisfy his hunger. Wait, his hunger for what? Alright then. Federico has long since finished his coffee by the time Mihara comes over to see him. He closes his book and cuts to the, ch to the chase. Aran Scorpion, scene will share the grid. <clears throat> oh ho ho. The contrast between him doing this and his typical attitude takes Mihara back. Aback. Federico notices this, but opts not to address it. Scared to Kunde Itatoki. You or Datsrak Sasetara or Shete Morout, the Yaksoko State Hazdaro. Interesting. Odet to Gadoki de Goita Kotea. Scared a gant or Shime Stakode, Nana Nina Titanga. I guess I knew. Son of Joe Hoshir Kendi or Hazda. Huh. Yeah, but hold on. Wasn't that... Wasn't that if you helped with eliminating you? Because you didn't do... Let's see. Hold on. Let me let me get my... Let me get my notes out that I definitely took. Uh, looks like you did shit. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you did absolutely nothing, so I don't know if you actually have the right to know, because Rinka's team took care of you. His attitude continues to surprise her. She had him pegged. Oh man. <laughs> As a far, far more brash and careless person, the type that could never be truly, truly be cruel to another. To be fair, he did help eliminate Odette. Which was one of the things that Mihara agreed to. Okay, there we go. Yeah, okay. I guess that's fair. She had him pegged. No! Might enjoy that. They had impression remained firm even during the latest round of Divine Selection. He even seemed the same when he first arrived at the restaurant, but everything changed the moment he took his seat. <laughs> She takes a moment to think before answering. Ignoring him outright is one option, but he seems to hold no hostility toward her. Add in the fact that he seems worth talking to right now, and... Are there... Is there no other... Okay. Okay, well, I know the reason, but is, are there no other bars in Tokyo nearby, even just nearby in the neighbor like neighborhood? Are there no other bars around? No, because we don't, we have not, we we did not draw a background for it, so no, there's not. This is absolutely not the place to discuss anything related to divine selection. Mihara is confident he'll be able to sort something out, although that confidence she has in him perplexes her. After arranging to meet in three hours, Federico pays his bill and leaves. Uh, I imagine most bars aren't constantly empty for suspicious people to talk about suspicious things. Okay, that makes sense. Or, I, I guess. But doesn't that mean that nobody wants to go to that bar, which means that bar sucks? Or, maybe no one knows it's a bar because it did say in one of the scenes where, some, where someone was going to it that it was hard to miss. It, it was um, not hard to miss. Easy to miss. Um, 
I, I tried to say hard to find and easy to miss at the same time. <laughs> yeah. I, was it Rinka? I think it was Rinka. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so... It, it, the bar is just easy to miss, so people don't go there. That, that That's it. I figured it out. Night has fallen by the time I finished cleaning my grand's room. Getting it all out of the way today was a good call, at least. It looks nice and clean now. All that's left is to wash the windows on Saturday. I took a nice warm shower to wash off all the sweat and dust. Wait, what day is it? No. Won't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. It's Monday. Alright. Ideally, I'd follow that up by crawling into bed and sleeping, but there's something else I need to do first. I take a deep breath and return my attention to a certain book. <laughs> It looks exactly the same as my card book. Wait, what? The one major difference is that this one is far more worn than mine. To the extent that it looks like it'll fall apart without proper care. The color and decorations on it are practically the same too, although hers feels somehow more unique than my card book. Almost like it was handcrafted as opposed to being mass produced. My grand was so surprised when she saw my card book during my visit the other day. I recall sending her a photo of it back before I realized its purpose. She didn't seem concerned at the time, claiming that there might be a similar book in her room. It wasn't until I s she saw the real thing that she remembered having one that looks exactly the same. What? There's no way I would let that comment slip past. I asked if I could check it out while cleaning her room, which she agreed to. <laughs> it took little effort to find, considering she remembered where it was. All I had to do was pull out a box from the bottom of her bookshelf shelf and open it. Oh, that bomb gets casually dropped. Yeah, yeah. Oh. That's what she told me, anyway. That, that would mean this has been around for over 100 years. Makes sense, considering its ragged condition. A book's history alone makes it a pretty important relic. With that in mind, I take a deep breath before opening it. Its contents are all written in English, which doesn't surprise me. My gran revealed that her own gran was from England, making her a quarter English. I was kind of amazed that she never once brought that up in the 16 years we'd spent together. When questioned about it, she replied that it's because I never thought to ask. Not only does this mean I'm 1 16th English, but it apparently also explains the gold coloring in some of my hair. Eh, okay. Setting that aside... She also said that she never bothered to read the book because her grasp of English is poor, to put it nicely. It remained an important memento of her own grand, however, so she couldn't bring herself to throw it away. The first page is a, is a simple brown flyleaf. Page two is where the diary starts. It's all handwritten, although the ink is starting to fade here and there due to its age. Can't say I'm too familiar with English writing habits, but something about the penmanship tells me it was written by a woman. That would mean it's my great-great-grandmother's diary. I place my card book next to the diary before reading it. I should be able to read it just fine thanks to the card book's effect. It takes me half an hour to make it through just two pages. The best comparison I can make is that it's trying to read Japanese, except the kanji are all jumbled up. Not being able to make out certain phrases is what makes it hard to decipher, basically. From what I could get through, it seems like a regular diary. She talks about the food she ate, who she talked to, that kind of stuff. I was right about it being written around 100 years ago, so it's pretty interesting to learn the cultural differences between the early 1900s and today. It'll take a while to get through the entire thing at this pace, though. Plus, it might not say anything related to a divine selection at all. It might... 
It might be best if I just check whether or not diaries like this were sold at the time if I can't find anything relevant by flipping through. I'll read one more page tonight before bed and then a few more tomorrow. That should be enough to decide whether it's worth perusing the rest or not. And this I think hilarious while solidifying my plan. Huh, wait. Why didn't that doesn't have any oh. Oh, I almost forgot. This diary was made and given to me by my sister Diana for my birthday. That explains my earlier thoughts. Although I figured it was more due to time taking its toll on the book rather than its craftsmanship. Now I'm even more curious about the link between it and, and our card books. It's definitely one of a kind. There was no internet back then, so they couldn't have published the design somewhere for others to easily replicate. The theory I had ten minutes ago had already been proven wrong thanks to this. Oh boy. My gut is telling me that I'm right. I doubt anyone would think otherwise when faced with these same mysteries. I had plan on studying tonight, but that can wait. Instead, I'll take I I, I take the di diary downstairs with me. I'll need the right environment to redo this beast. Okay. I think that's gonna do it. We're at fifty three minutes, and one other thing that's happened that I've noticed happening in um with the new headphones and having my hair down is that I'm getting really hot and I can't turn my fan on. Well, I mean, I guess I could, but it'll be really, really loud. I almost kind of want to try it. But I won't. Uh, honestly, that's probably a really bad idea because the fan is, like, right behind my, my not camera fan, microphone. So, I'm not going to do that. Um, but yeah, um, Let's save data here. Um, so we got some new, we, we, we got another memory back for Rinka. Um, I wonder if Alan's going to be going to be able to have that talk he wants with Rinka next time. I, of course, I wonder what Federico and Mihara are going to uh, discuss in this next scene. Um, hmm. I was thinking last time, last Wednesday, I'm, I'm going to talk about Wednesdays. Um, my... It might not be the case tomorrow, but it was the case yesterday that after class I wasn't too tired. I, I may even stream for an hour after that, but I'm not going to make it a thing. It's entirely possible that I am okay and not too tired to stream after my class tomorrow. So there's a possibility, um, but don't yeah, don't count on it. In fact. Yeah, I mean, I'll... Well, last week was like a... Kind of, it was really chill. We didn't really do anything heavy in terms of, like, learning and shit. <laughs> um, but I'm pretty sure tomorrow's class will, will get back... We'll get back into it, so... Uh, probably not gonna stream tomorrow. Um, even... Well, anyway, that being said, obviously... There's no stream tomorrow, Wednesday, right, class. Um, so we'll be back on Thursday. Um, I have more announcements, but that can wait till Thursday. Um, or Friday. No, it'll wait until Thursday. Oh, I have things to do. People to talk to. Okay. Anyway. Um, we, we did this. Yeah, okay. Close. Go back to the menu. Main menu. Yes, go back to title. <sighs> so, no matter where you're watching this from, this is the end of the video, end of the stream, and I hope you enjoyed. I very much did. Um, I'm... There seems to be always something new. <laughs> Somehow. Um... 
Oh. <laughs> Sounds like someone saw a cat. If that, if the mic picked that up. Um, anyway, um. Yeah, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, consider following me on Twitch. And if you're watching on YouTube, consider liking the video. Um, if you enjoyed, you know, thing. Um, comment if you have something to say. And subscribe on YouTube for more, for more videos. Yeah, um. Anyway. Okay, yeah. Um, the part, okay, actually, no, no, no. um, that's, that's it, I guess. <sighs> um, space out for a little bit there. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna do the last little bit of the outro then. Um, thank you for watching. This has been Fatal 12. I've been Calypso, aka Mint Carousel, and I'm signing out. Have a wonderful rest of your day.